Welcome. In this video, I would like to return to my discussion of Zotero. The use of Zotero allows the collection of bibliographic data as well as digital copies of information that you review during your research, such as documents that you are able to acquire through Google Scholar or your university library. But today, I'd like to look a little bit deeper into how Zotero can be used to most effectively annotate and then extract annotated data from the PDF files that you store in your Zotero database. Here I'm displaying a collection of entries in my Zotero database. You may recognize some of these from my prior videos. I've collected these from Google Scholar or from public websites or from my university library. The topics that each the entries address is irrelevant for the purposes of this video. So I hope you'll recognize that if you're not interested in the topics of these articles, bear with me. I'm just using them as examples for the purposes of this tutorial. Now, if I were to double click one of these, you'll see that the attached PDF file opens up in my PDF viewer. And that's because attached to each of these is a PDF file. So I'll open up the first one and show you what it looks like on my computer. When I double click on the entry in the Zotero collection, the, if a PDF file were included with that entry, the PDF file will open in the PDF viewing application that I have configured Zotero to use. Here, I've opened the PDF file in preview because I'm working on a MacBook. I, while I prefer to use a different PDF viewing software, I'm going to first do my demonstration using Preview because that software is available to all Mac users and is very similar to complementary software that's available on Microsoft Windows computers. You can see here that I can scroll down, view the pages of the document, including any graphic images. I can also use the thumbnails on the left to jump to particular pages within the document. And of course, there's the find function. On my Mac, I can use Control, I'm sorry, Command F. On a Windows computer, the command would be Control F to find particular text, such as the word subject, within the body of the PDF file. I've turned off the identification of each instance of the word subject by closing my search box. Now, the purpose of research is the collection of usable data that serves to help answer the research questions that we set at the beginning of the research process. Part of reading academic literature is the identification within each document that we read of the salient data that serves our research needs. So, for example, as I'm reading this document, I, I come across a sentence that I think is going to be useful to me in the future. It, it gives me a clue for further research. And it, it's this sentence here. There is major disagreement among the specialists about the existence of a design stage. 
Okay. In this paper, that major disagreement is not further discussed. So it might be useful to me to make a note of the comment that the, authors, the author made so that I could further research what the disagreement is. And there's the most common way of identifying text is to use a highlighter. So I'll use a yellow highlighter. I'll highlight the text and move on. But there's a potential problem. I'll give you a moment. Can you think of what the potential problem might be? It's not obvious. Here's the problem. While this document highlighting is visually appealing, while I'm viewing the document on my screen, if I were to send this document to a grayscale laser printer, it's very possible that this highlighting will create insufficient contrast with the highlighted text, making the text very difficult to read. And I frequently share printed copies of PDF documents in which I've inserted annotations. So it's important that I'm able to prepare my annotations in a form that will work on any printer. Now, sending this document to a color printer probably will work just fine. But if I were to send it to a laser printer that can only do grayscale images, there's a good chance this text could be difficult to read. So instead of using highlighting, I prefer to use underlining. So rather than choosing a yellow highlighter, I'll choose underline and then select the same text. Now, I choose to use a red underline because the red still captures my attention when I'm viewing the document on the screen. But when this document is printed to a laser printer, the red prints in a sufficiently dark line that it's easily read or identified, I should say, on the printed copy. So for me, a red underline is more flexible than a yellow highlighter. Because I had just recently highlighted text, even though for me a highlight is a red underline, I'm free to continue to use my mouse as a highlighter. For example, this statement here about um, Chronicles rarely mentioning the names of architects, I think is important. Assumptions about abstract ideas, I think is important. If I wish to use my mouse for a purpose other than highlighting, such as selecting text to copy into a Microsoft Word document, I have to turn off the highlighting function, and now I'm free to use the mouse in its standard function. Now, these three snippets of text that I have marked with red underlining are generically referred to as highlightings or annotations, and it's possible to take these snippets that have been annotated and export them to a separate text file using Zotero. And I think this is one of the coolest features of the Zotero program. So if I save this PDF file with its annotations and then move return back to the Zotero application, 
it's possible for me to then, using my right mouse button, select the entry in my Zotero collection and choose to add a note from the annotations. And Zotero automatically takes the snippets of text, marks them as quotations, and identifies where they occurred in the PDF file. So the, this is an APA style citation to the author, the year of publication, and the page of the PDF file. Now, granted, I, I said that wrong. It's the page within the document in which the PDF file um, was published. And this allows me to now take the text from this window and I can select it and copy it into Microsoft Word or whatever program that I'm using to create my annotated bibliography. I'd like to caution. You might remember from prior videos that I tell my students do not quote data sources. Always paraphrase the sources that they read. The problem with putting a quotation into the annotated bibliography is that it's possible to accidentally copy the quotation from the annotated bibliography into the academic paper that you're creating and forget to properly identify that copied text as being a direct quotation. But as long as you're careful, it is possible to take the quoted annotations here and copy them over to Microsoft Word. I said earlier that I would demonstrate the PDF annotation software that I prefer to use. Now, I'm not necessarily recommending this software to you because it is a commercial product and it does cost money to use. Whereas the preview application comes for free with the Mac OS X operating system. So, take my advice with a grain of salt. I use another application for very specific publishing purposes, but I also prefer the way it um, underlines text. So let me show you. If I were to open the PDF file that we've been working with, in my preferred application, that's PDF Pen Pro. I can see the red underlines that I had inserted using the preview application. But now in PDF Pen Pro, if I turn on underlining, I get a much finer thinner red underline that's also closer to the, the baseline of the text. In other words, it takes, it's less visually intrusive. I prefer this. It prints very well on both my color and my um, grayscale laser printers. It is still uh, sufficiently visually attractive to uh, grab my attention from a computer screen, and it's also very easy to read on my iPads. But if uh, you don't want to spend the money to purchase PDF Pen Pro, and I'll link it down below in the description, uh, then using Preview will give you all the necessary fundamental functionality for annotating your documents. I'd like to show you one more trick in the use of Zotero. The time may come when, when working on a group project, you would like to share a copy of the PDF file that you've been annotating. 
in Zotero, click on the entry within your collection that has the PDF file you've annotated, view the entry for the PDF, and then click show the file. So I right clicked on the PDF and then left clicked show file. This is the PDF file through the uh, Finder application on my Mac. From here, I can drag and drop that uh, PDF file as an email attachment, or I can also drag and drop it into a messages text message or into WhatsApp. I use WhatsApp frequently to send files to colleagues that are overseas or that don't use an iOS device. Um, email is falling a little bit out of favor among my colleagues and I, but we do use it, but often um, the instantaneous transmission of the file via WhatsApp or messages is more common. I hope you found this introduction to the annotation of PDFs and the management of PDF files using Zotero to be helpful. It is vital during your research that you annotate the documents that you read. So annotation has multiple meanings. It, yes, it does mean the making of notes within an annotated bibliography. It also can mean the identification of snippets of text within a document that you don't want to forget. Whether you choose to use a colored highlighter or you follow my preference of using a red underlining doesn't have significant bearing on the annotation process. But I do encourage you to mark your documents in a way that keeps the marking flexible. Test print the documents on a color printer and on a grayscale laser printer. Make sure your annotations don't block any of the text within the document, yet are sufficiently dark enough to be read. For me, the red underlining suits that purpose best. I wish you the absolute best as you continue your research and you annotate the PDF files that you acquire during your research. And I look forward to seeing you again in a future video. Bye for now.